Good morning! This is probably the last morning I will wake up to Mateo's van being right next to me. Aww. It's gonna be hard. Number one, I'm gonna miss him. Number two, I'm gonna miss camping with someone. Number three, I'm gonna miss this place, which we both love so much, but hopefully he's right behind me and we both continue north and continue north and continue north all summer. Bye, Mateo. Goodbye. <laughs> today i know it's really dark oh you can't see me that well but i'm here i'm at my favorite beach spot when i lived in my car i used to come here all the time i would just live here it's in crescent city and i mean look at this view it's gorgeous there was hardly ever anyone here it was one of those rare it's one of those places where like please 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 other people don't ruin it for everyone and it happened i haven't been here for probably two years since 2021 and now there are no camping signs no parking from 11 to 5 a.m i think so no one is allowed to camp here anymore. It's really sad, but you can still come and hang out and there's still nobody here and it's still gorgeous. I love this area of the country so much. It's just breathtaking. And the fact that it's so isolated makes it that much more enchanting. The only thing is it's so freaking cold. Being from Texas, 70 degrees is Christmas weather to me. Here, if we're lucky, it reaches 70. It's normally 50, 60 degrees. I'm very chilly here. I didn't even realize it. But we're essentially halfway through July. Time is flying. Um, I'm ready to experience heat. I'm ready for some sunshine. It's been a while and I need consistent, warm sunshine. So I'm gonna keep heading north. Um, God, it's hard because I could stay here forever, but I have the whole summer, you know, whatever. My soul's telling me to drive today, so I'm gonna keep driving and we'll see where I end up. There's not very much sunlight left and also where I'm at there's a lot of road noise so my apologies if it's loud. I drove for much longer than I thought because I kept thinking I was going to find somewhere to stay and I kept not. Uh, I looked up dispersed sites and Siri led me to the middle of the road so that didn't work out and then I tried campgrounds and every single one of them was booked until I found this one. I asked the camp host right away are there any spots left? He said yes there's one spot left for a small vehicle. Hallelujah. I got lucky and I also got lucky because it's incredibly beautiful here. Clear skies which I have not seen in a while and I have river access so I went for a little well I tried to go for a dip in the river uh it's cold. <laughs> I don't know what I thought. So I didn't stay in for long. 
Also, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. I haven't encountered mosquitoes in a really long time. But they exist and I totally forgot. And I am eaten alive right now by mosquito bites. Just everywhere. Okay, you can't see that one. Um, I am about to close up shop and go to bed. The campgrounds are very full. Lots of activity. And my door is open. Everybody gets a free show. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, this place is beautiful, but there's mosquitoes everywhere and I really gotta go. I'm back in Cave Junction, Oregon. This is the first place that I ever lived as a nomad. I lived here at this campground. I haven't been here in two years. I'm gonna go see all my old neighbors. I'm so excited and I will definitely give you guys a tour. But for now, I'm just gonna go and enjoy. I'm in Oregon again. It's beautiful. This is the perfect time to be here. Good morning. I am currently inside my old neighbor's house. So I stayed the night last night in Cave Junction. I originally just thought I would stop in here, say hi to everybody. And I lived here two years ago for just a few months. So I really didn't expect anyone to remember me. Just kind of wanted to see my old stomping grounds. But to my surprise, everyone remembered me and was so happy to see me so that was a really nice surprise yesterday we spent all day kayaking down the river just hanging out it's warm here okay it's hot we had dinner together just hung out all night and it was such a nice time when i lived here this was before i was a community oriented woman i was very individualistic because it was when i had just moved into my car i was a solo traveler i felt that okay i'm gonna live here for a little while but i'm not gonna really integrate because it's just somewhere that I'm gonna be temporarily. But I guess I did integrate more than I thought and I'm so happy to be back. Everyone is so kind. My neighbors are still some of the nicest people I've ever met on the road. Got to shower and do everything I needed in their home because they left it open to me this morning after not seeing me for two years. See what happens when you leave your heart open. tell obviously not okay i am back my phone is running out of storage anyway i am back in the place from the video where i was camping in the woods and the ranger came up to me and said you know you're camping in the murder capital of oregon and i was like okay i'm here again and it's just as beautiful and once again i'd risk it all to stay here 100 percent, and so serene and quiet it's like there's no one here actually there are people here this time well, a person, it was a, a baby person, not a baby person, but like a, not yet a toddler, but what do you call it when a baby is like a little bit grown? Anyway, I'm unfortunately not staying the night tonight. I just came to check it out since I'm now going on a revisitation tour of Oregon, I guess. It's so crazy to have Stevie Ray Van in the places that Chevy Vetter once stood. RIP girl. It's pretty magical out here. I do have to keep heading north because... This weekend, it's supposed to get in the hundreds here. I can't, I can't do that in a van. Had enough of that in Arizona and I'm done with that. So I'm gonna keep going further north, but 
Thanks you guys for helping me choose Oregon. This was a great idea. For now, I might just do a little walk. sweating up a storm <laughs> and I just took a shower at my neighbors this morning oh well this is why I gotta keep going do you hear the medium baby it's out there <laughs> But guess where I made it to? I am now outside the rest stop in Portland where I lived at for like two months, two years ago in my car, Chevy Vetter. It's really crazy that I'm here again. Obviously, you know that I've always wanted to come back up. I always dreamt of coming back to the PNW. You guys know how much I love trees. I love the redwoods. And I got stuck in Arizona with the heat and the desert and just getting Stevie right. I was being tested for sure. Is that a plane? I was in my joke face. And now I'm back, again! I previously had so much anxiety with my van situation. I didn't know if I was going to be able to drive a cargo van on the cramped streets of LA. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it through the very steep mountain passes that Oregon has. Stevie goes like max 45 uphill and Oregon has very, very steep uphills. I honestly didn't know if I was ever gonna be able to come here again within the near future, even though that is desperately, that is all I wanted, that's all I thought about. And it took me about two years to do it. I was so used to just getting up and going whenever I felt the itch. So to essentially be stagnant for two whole years really tested me in all ways. Um, I've never been as stressed, as broke, as rock bottomy as I have when I was living in Arizona in a van during summertime where it would get maybe below 87 degrees at night if I'm lucky imagine having to fall asleep in that it was hell but it all worked out and to be honest it was worth it because you know what it forced me to do it forced me to stop being such a solo female traveling cowgirl for a second and actually rely on other people and integrate into community after a literal lifetime of hyper independence I had to learn to trust and be willing to form new relationships, which was kind of a big deal to me. But now that I've done that, I can honestly say that I'm a better traveler, I'm a better friend. It's kind of hard to admit, but I think that I'm also just a better person. So it was all very necessary, but I'm so glad that I had both the patience and the courage to push through so that I could be in this exact spot again. It's never felt so good to be at a rest area. <laughs> This is a very pretty rest stop. So I am at um, this rest area where I'm gonna sleep tonight. I'm at the rest area where I slept last night, really pretty. I'm so lucky to live this life. I'm so grateful to be back on the road. I'm having a perfect day. I'm sweaty, it's hot. Um, if anybody decided to come to Oregon, just know it's actually really hot up here. Like high 80s, even into the, today it's 90s, so just, just know that. Oh, frick. Um, anyway, if y'all take anything from this multi-year, no travel to living my dreams again debacle, it's that sometimes your mind can make your fears seem bigger than they actually are. And sometimes you just have to say YOLO and send it. Or since I'm in Oregon, like Nike, 
just do it. You might be surprised at what you can accomplish. I definitely was. I would like to give a shout out to my wonderful community who has stuck by me this entire time. Through all the bad and the good, the ugly and the funny, I quite literally would not be here without you. I love reading your comments and seeing familiar names pop up every week. Thank you and I love you. Also shout out to my Blue Eddy power stations and their long-term charging abilities. I left my device to charge at the beginning of the day and now I'm here at the end of the day and it's fully powered and ready to go. So thanks Blue Eddy for keeping me on the road so far and thank you all for being here. I will see you in the next one. Guest appearance. Hi bestie. I love truckers. Okay, I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.